In this video, we're going to go over dominance, leakage, penetrance, and expressivity, hybrid viability, and gene pools. Start with dominance. There are three different types that you need to know for LAMCAT. Complete dominance, incomplete dominance, and co-dominance. In this diagram, you can see the difference between complete dominance and incomplete dominance. Complete dominance is essentially the simple Mendelian dominance that we've been looking at before, where the dominant allele completely masks the effects of the recessive allele in heterozygotes. So you can see here how the homozygous dominant plant with big R, big R alleles has red flowers. The homozygous recessive plant with little r, little r alleles has white flowers, and the heterozygote with big R, little r alleles has red flowers. Again, the heterozygote has a phenotype determined completely by the dominant allele, and the recessive allele is masked. You can also see in this diagram the difference between complete dominance and incomplete dominance. In incomplete dominance, neither allele is dominant. So the phenotype of the heterozygote is actually an intermediate of the two homozygous phenotypes. So as you can see, in plants with two big R alleles, they have red flowers. In plants with two little r alleles, they have white flowers. And in heterozygotes with a big R and a little r allele, they have pink flowers. Pink flowers is not the phenotype of either homozygous plants, the big R, big R, or little r, little r. The pink color is an intermediate of the two homozygous phenotypes. All right, the last type of dominance is codominance, where both alleles are expressed. The most common example of this is blood types in humans. And again, we can see this summarized in this diagram. For blood types, there are three different alleles. The big IA allele, the big IB allele, and the little i allele. You can see, for genotypes, individuals with two big IA alleles, or a big IA and a little a allele, they have the A antigen on their red blood cells, and their blood type is A. In individuals with two big IB alleles, or one big IB and one little i allele, they have the B antigen on their red blood cells, and their blood type is B. In individuals with a big IA allele and a big IB allele, they express both the A and B antigens on their red blood cells, and their blood type is AB. These AB individuals are an example of codominance. The individual expresses both alleles, both the A antigen from the IA allele and the B antigen from the IB allele. Finally, in individuals with two little i alleles, they do not express any antigens on their red blood cells, and their blood type is O. Okay. So that's dominance. Let's now take a look at leakage, penetrance, and expressivity. Leakage is referring to the transfer of genes from one organism to another. This is often discussed with genetically modified organisms. So for example, a particular crop could be genetically modified to have resistance to pesticides. So this way, farmers can grow these genetically modified crops and apply pesticides that will kill the weeds, but not the crops. Leakage would be referring to the transfer of this pesticide resistance gene from this crop to the weeds. The transfer of genes from one organism to another. And of course, this is a concern in the field of genetically modified organisms because if the weeds gain the pesticide resistance gene, that's going to be a very large problem for farmers. Penetrance is referring to the percentage of organisms with a particular allele that has the associated phenotype. So before, when we talked about organisms with a certain allele, we just said they have that phenotype. That's not always the case. For example, 70% of mice with a mutation in the COL1A1 gene has bone fractures. 
the phenotype associated with this allele, this mutation. Since only 70% of mice with this allele have this phenotype, we say that this COL1A1 mutation has a 70% penetrance. Expressivity is the degree to which a trait is expressed in individuals. This is often referring to traits that aren't necessarily black and white. So for traits that can vary along a spectrum, for instance, looking at the particular shade of a color. And this, these two topics, penetrance and expressivity, can be nicely summarized in this diagram. You can see in the top row what penetrance refers to. Essentially, individuals with allele either have the phenotype or they don't have the phenotype. In the second row, we can see how expressivity works. All of the individuals have the phenotype, but the degree to which they have the phenotype varies. So the phenotype is stronger in some individuals and weaker in other individuals. In the last row, we have a situation where both penetrance and expressivity are in play. So you can see that some individuals have the phenotype and others don't. And for the individuals with the phenotype, some have a stronger phenotype and others have a weaker phenotype. All right, so that's penetrance and expressivity. Next, we can talk about hybrid viability. Hybrid viability is looking at heterozygotes and their ability to produce offspring, essentially their ability to pass on their genes to the next generation of offspring. So there are two common concepts that show up on the MCAT here. One is hybrid and viability. Hybrid and viability are referring to situations where the hybrids are unable to produce viable offspring. A very common example of this is looking at mules. Mules are hybrids that are produced from crosses between donkeys and horses. And mules, while they are living organisms, they can move around and can be used in farms, mules are sterile. They cannot reproduce to form offspring. Another type of hybrids is looking at heterozygote advantage. Heterozygote advantage is looking at interesting situations where heterozygotes have greater viability than homozygous dominant or homozygous recessive organisms. And again, the common textbook example of this is sickle cell anemia in Africa. So in Africa and several other nations, malaria is still a serious disease that causes many deaths. Sickle cell anemia is referring to a mutation that causes a change in the shape of blood cells. And this is a mutation that affects a particular allele. So humans can have either two wild type allele and have regular red blood cells, two of these mutant alleles and have red blood cells that all have this sickle cell shape, or they can be heterozygotes where they will have one copy of the wild type allele and one copy of the sickle cell allele. These heterozygotes have both normal red blood cells and sickle cell red blood cells. So they have essentially some of each blood type. In malaria, humans with normal red blood cells are targets for mosquitoes and when they get malaria, they die. In individuals that have two sickle cell anemia alleles, they have sickle cell anemia, which also reduces their viability, so they also die. In heterozygotes, it's an interesting situation. They have half of their blood is normal and half of the blood is sickle celled. It turns out that with half normal blood, they're able to survive just fine. And when you have mosquitoes, mosquitoes Will, will not affect sickle celled red blood cells as much as normal blood cells. So essentially with sickle celled blood cells, these individuals have some protection from malaria. So essentially you can see that these heterozygotes have this advantage. They don't have the full sickle cell anemia disease 
and they have some protection from malaria. So this is heterozygote advantage. The last topic we're going to discuss in this video is gene pool. Gene pool is referring to all of the genes in a population, and this is a measure of biodiversity. Essentially, when you look at all the individuals in a population and you pull all their genes together, you're looking to see how much variation there is. If there's a lot of variation, then that means that population has a high genetic diversity. Whereas if there are the same copies of genes over and over again, so there aren't, isn't too much variation, then that would be low genetic diversity. A gene pool can be altered in various ways. And in particular for Lamcat, you should be familiar with both inbreeding and population bottlenecks. Both of these are methods of reducing the gene pool and decreasing genetic diversity. So inbreeding is essentially when the same individuals breed with each other over and over again. And while inbreeding can have some advantages in that if there's a particular trait that people like, then you're able to preserve that trait uh, in all of the offspring. The downside, of course, is that you're not producing organisms that are blends from all of the different possible traits available. So inbreeding does reduce the gene pool. Another example is population bottlenecks, which you can see in this diagram. Population bottlenecks is referring to catastrophic events where a significant percentage of the population perishes or is lost. And when these events happen, the population that is left over, the individuals that survive, are not necessarily representative of the original population. So this surviving population, whatever alleles they have, now that represents the gene pool of the population. And by chance, that might result in the loss of several genes or alleles, reducing the genetic diversity of that population.